Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Season and Serve Blog. My name is Melissa and today I'm going to show you how to use up lots of garden zucchini in this delicious recipe for zucchini and parmesan risotto. This is one of my favorite summer garden to table recipes because it uses seasonal zucchini and basil that is just flourishing in the garden this time of year. So if you want to see how to make my zucchini and parmesan risotto, just keep on watching. So we'll actually start out in the garden by harvesting our zucchini and this is what our zucchini plant looks like. This is just a green zucchini plant and we were able to harvest one zucchini off of this and then we also got a yellow zucchini from our family as well. So we're going to use both of these types of zucchini in my recipe. You can just use green or just use yellow zucchini in this recipe, it doesn't matter in terms of flavor. I'm also going to harvest one of my zucchini flowers because they're completely edible and it looks super pretty on top of this risotto. And we're also going to harvest some basil. This is Genovese basil that I have in my garden and it is just thriving. So we're going to take a couple sprigs of that and I always make sure to pinch down the stem just above the next set of leaves just so that basil will branch out and you'll get a nice bushy basil plant. And as always, whenever I'm out in the garden, Pearl has to be here too. So Pearl helped me harvest all of these things. And now we're going to take our ingredients inside, give them a quick wash, and then we'll be ready to prep our risotto. To begin this recipe, we're going to prepare our zucchini first. And if you have really good knife skills and a good chef's knife, you can cut these zucchini nice and thin, but instead I'm going to use a tool called a mandolin today. And this is a really great tool for slicing fruits or vegetables super thin. All you have to do is set the blade and then run the vegetable over the blade to get nice thin slices. And I'm slicing my zucchini into two millimeter thick rounds and they are super thin. They are almost basically transparent when you hold them up to the light. And once I finish up slicing the yellow zucchini, I'll move on to the green zucchini, making sure to keep the blade at the same thickness. Once the zucchini are sliced, we'll move them over to the side of the cutting board to make room for preparing the rest of our vegetables, including an onion and some garlic. Well, for this recipe, you'll need about a cup of onion that is finely diced, and this onion that I pulled out of my pantry was massive, so I actually only used a third of it. And to get a nice fine dice on this onion, I'm just cutting it horizontally and then vertically, so you get little tiny squares when you slice across the onion, just like this. Once the onion is nice and finely chopped, we'll move that over to the side and then prepare our garlic. And in this recipe, I like to use four cloves of garlic because garlic is probably one of my most favorite flavors ever. And then I'll simply smash the garlic to remove the peel and then chop it up nice and finely. And I'm gonna make sure it's cut a little bit more fine than the onions, just so it kind of disintegrates into the risotto. And once the garlic is chopped up, all your vegetables will be prepared. So we'll set these aside and then we'll grate some Parmesan cheese. Now instead of grating parmesan cheese on a box grater or a microplane, I actually like to put it into the food processor and pulse it until it's nice and finely chopped. It's kind of violent at first, it kind of flies around the food processor as you can tell, but as it becomes smaller and smaller, you get these really nice fine pieces of parmesan and it is so much faster than grating it by hand. So the next time you have to grate parmesan cheese, definitely try putting it in the food processor to save a little bit of time. Now that we have all our ingredients prepared, we can get to cooking the risotto. So I'm gonna start by putting a little bit of olive oil in the pan, and then we'll add in the sliced zucchini. And we're gonna cook the zucchini a little bit before we cook the risotto, just so that we get these nice and soft and a little bit caramelized on the edges. And of course, we always wanna make sure we season at each stage, so I'm gonna sprinkle the zucchini with a little bit of salt and ground black pepper, and then give that a stir. We'll continue to cook the zucchini over a medium heat for about five to six minutes or until the zucchini become nice and soft, just like this. And at this stage, we'll remove the zucchini from the pan and reserve it in a bowl for later. Once the zucchini has been removed from the pan, we'll return the same pan back to the heat and add some olive oil. Then we'll add our arborio rice. And arborio rice is the traditional rice that you would use for risotto. So we'll add it into the pan and start to move it around and get it nice and toasted. 
As the rice toasts in the oil, all those little zucchini bits on the bottom of the pan are gonna start to caramelize. So we're gonna deglaze it with some white wine. And you can use any dry white wine that you have available, but my favorite one is actually from Blue Grouse and this is the Quill Q White. So I'm just gonna add a little tiny splash into here just to kind of get all those bits off the bottom of the pan. And we're gonna scrape it using our spoon and after that, we'll add in our onions as well as our garlic and then get those all coated in the olive oil and the wine and we'll let those soften for about two to three minutes. As I've been cooking the risotto so far, you may have noticed a small pot to the back of my stove. And in this pot, I have some chicken stock. And I have this chicken stock simmering over medium to low heat. And we just wanna make sure that it's warm because we're gonna add it into our risotto half a cup at a time. Once you add in the half cup of chicken stock, give it a good stir and kind of stir it occasionally. You don't really have to stir it the entire time that you're making risotto. Just give it a nice stir and then you'll know when you're ready to add more chicken stock when you can kind of take your spoon and draw a line through the risotto and it doesn't kind of fall back into itself. And it's only at that stage that you add another half cup of chicken stock, give it a stir, and then keep the process going until you used up all the chicken stock. And this entire cooking process will take about 15 to 20 minutes. And of course, the full recipe, including all the exact measurements and directions, is posted to my blog, and I will leave that linked in the description box below. After about 20 minutes, the risotto should be al dente, and at the very end, I like to add in an extra splash of wine to really bring the wine flavor out, and then we're going to add in our Parmesan cheese. We'll reduce the heat to low and give that all a nice good mix, and then we'll taste it for seasoning. Once you have it seasoned the way you want it, remove it from the heat, and then we'll add in our zucchini that we cooked earlier. And because these are so delicate, we're going to be really careful and just gently fold these in, trying to get the zucchini evenly distributed amongst the risotto. Once that's mixed through, remove it from the heat, and then we're ready to serve. And to serve, I like to place a big heaping mound of the zucchini and parmesan risotto onto a large serving plate, and then we're gonna add some beautiful garnishes. So the first step, we're gonna add, of course, a little bit more parmesan cheese because you can never have too much parmesan. And then we're gonna add some basil leaves, and I like to just add them on whole, just from the garden that we picked earlier. And I add them on whole because I think they look really pretty, but if you want to julienne them, you can do that as well. I also like to add a big bunch of basil to the side, and then I tear up the zucchini flour from earlier and just add it on top. This is just completely raw, it looks super beautiful, and all you have to do is remove that interior stem from the zucchini flour. Then as a final touch, we'll add a little drizzle of some extra virgin olive oil and a sprinkling of freshly ground black pepper. And there you have a delicious summer recipe for zucchini and parmesan risotto. Simply take this big serving plate to the table and let your guests just dig in. And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this delicious garden to table recipe. If you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and also check out my blog for lots of other delicious seasonal recipes. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to enjoy the best of the season every day.